many of us, I'm not, I'm, I'm not including myself, but I know a lot of speakers who get paid to go on stage, deliver a talk, and run away, run to the airport. Um, they don't stay. They don't mingle. They, right. They're not a part of the event that they go to. I've always personally prided myself on telling the meeting planners that um, I will stick around as long as I can. Um, if I can stick around, if I have a morning talk, I want to be there for the, the morning break. I want to be there for the lunch. If I can still be there for the afternoon break and the cocktail hour and the dinner and I go home the next morning, I'm going to do that. Right. I'm not just going to do my speech, get off the stage and run to the airport. Um, well, it turns out that that's really, really, really effective for building fans as a speaker because of this incredible, powerful emotion that you're developing among those people who you have a chance to meet, especially when you hang around after your talk. Right. Because when they see you in the speech, you're in their public space. You're 20 feet or further away. You're on that stage. You're untouchable. Then when they see you afterwards at the, uh, the morning break, at the lunch, at the reception, you have a five minutes to talk with them over a glass of wine at the reception. Incredibly powerful human emotions happening right then. They already trust you. They know you're the speaker. Yep. They heard you talk. Um, that is a way to build fans. And, um, you know, it, it's worked for me brilliantly. You know, then the, the, the number of people then who comment to me later, God, it was so great to meet you. Thank you very much. I loved your talk. Every one of those is someone who can recommend you to, a, to another speech. Every one of those people, right. someone who can buy your next book. Um, uh, one more thing related to this is I al also find it really important after I get off the stage to immediately, as soon as I can, check the social feeds, uh, check the check Twitter and, 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 the, and the hashtag, if there's a hashtag at the event, okay. and immediately begin replying um, to anybody who's reached out using my Twitter ID um, or anybody who's used a hashtag and talked about me. I immediately, right. as quickly as I can, um, uh, respond because those are people who took the time to say something about you. Uh, and I respond to them really quickly. So those are some of the things that I find around fandom that can work well for speakers. It's funny, you contrast the talking with people at an event uh, after you speak with, uh, if you talk to them before you speak, it's just awkward. It's clunky. Yeah. It's uh, uncomfortable for everyone. They're like, wait, who are you? And why are you here? Like, yeah, what do you do? What do you speak? And it's just, it's just weird. But after you speak, it's just night and day. It opens up all these opportunities that you're able to talk with people. And everything you just described there is oftentimes what an event planner is looking for. Right. So if you're mediocre at best on stage, but you're amazing off stage and you interact and you stick around, that's the type of speaker that clients want to work with. That's exactly. 